Before Jesus rose into heaven, his last word to his followers was a commission to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. The urgency of his words underscores the fact that he is the only way to God and that no other religion can save people from certain judgment. For you and for me and for all humanity, the stakes are high, so please stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. We're in a series on 10 lies about God and why you might already be deceived. Today, Erwin Lutzer speaks on lie number five, that God is obligated to save followers of other religions, looking at how we can respond to the uniqueness of Christianity. Bible says regarding the nations of the world, he that sitteth in the heavens shall last, the Lord shall have them in derision. We're talking about a very holy God, and the Bible says it is a fearful thing to fall into his hands unprepared. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Another possibility, we have looked at agnosticism, anger. The other possibility is awe. To say, wow, if that's the God, if that's the God that the Bible represents, I'd better get my act together. I'd better become his worshiper. I'd better get to know his son because apart from his son, there can be no salvation. And, and therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive his son as my savior and believe in him that I might be saved. Now, that's another option. And that's the one I'm urging you and pleading with you, please take that option. What about the matter of bigotry? You know, in the Old Testament, God chose the Jews, no question about it. Did it lead to bigotry? Yes, it did, unfortunately. You look at some of the passages in the Bible, it's very clear. Can that lead to bigotry in our lives? Absolutely. Tragically, it's possible. What do we do? Do we become bigoted? No. When we understand this, we are humbled. We're saying, God, why me? Why do I have the opportunity? And we bow in the presence of sovereign God and say, I will never, never, never take credit in humility and brokenness. I will share the good news of the gospel. Never with a self-righteous attitude of we're right and you're wrong, but rather we're all wrong and Jesus is right. That's the way in which we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the difference between Christianity and the other options out there? Well, one is that all the other options are people trying to get to God, seeking him, groping for him, as the old King James said. And the other is a revealed religion where God comes down and God saves, and as a result of that, salvation is a free gift. In no other religion do you have that. One time I was with a man on the plane, and he said... uh, You know, there are just a lot of religions in the world. And I said, yeah, but fundamentally only two. Let's take a piece of paper and on one side you write down all the religions that believe that you have to be a good person to get to heaven. And that's the way to become a good person, that you have to work your way to heaven. Let's put all the religions of the world that believe that in some form on this sheet of paper. Over here, all those who believe that salvation is a free gift to those who humble themselves and receive it. Let's put all the ones on that side of the slip of paper. Well, you know, only Christianity was on that one side. And it has to be a free gift. Think about it. We do not have the righteousness that God requires. Christ is the only one who has it. We cannot cooperate and add to his righteousness and make it better. So we simply humble ourselves and we receive that gift. That's what makes Christianity so unique. But its uniqueness is its stumbling block because people say, well, I want to work at it or uh, I can just accept Jesus and live like I like. The unconverted say. They have no notion of the radical change God brings about when people are saved. In the country of India, there was a missionary who made friends with a Hindu pearl diver. And uh, they became good friends, and the Hindu was a very loving man. And uh, One day he gave the missionary one of the most beautiful, exquisite pearls that one could possibly even imagine. And the missionary said to him, he said, "Uh, I I need to pay you for this. I can't accept it as a free gift. And the pearl diver said, absolutely not. He said, 
You, you must accept it free. You cannot pay me because I need to tell you that this pearl was retrieved by my only son who drowned and died in the process. If you were to pay me, it would be an insult for the blood of my son, the life of my son. And the missionary said, do you realize what you've just said? You have had such a hard time with this whole idea that salvation is a free gift. You thought that you had to go to Delhi on your knees and so forth. You thought, it, you thought it was so hard, but don't you understand that the reason you can't pay for it is because God sent his only son and gives us a pearl, a gift that is so priceless, it is an insult to think that you can buy it. And the pearl diver understood the wonder of the gospel and believed. What a marvelous message. Let's give our lives to proclaim it around the world. And to those who, you who are listening here in this church or listening by radio, let me tell you that through Christ there is a gift that you cannot buy. And it's the message that we want to give to the entire world. Would you join me as we pray? Our Father, we want to thank you today for your greatness and for your sovereignty. And we pray that we might not take for granted the wonder of you giving us the privilege of belonging to you and the marvelous gospel that we proclaim. We pray for those who have listened to this and they're struggling as to whether they can believe. We pray that you will cause them to believe. Bring them to faith in Jesus, we pray. Father, the work that you've begun in our hearts, complete it, we pray. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Pastor Lutzer, you said there are not too many sins left in contemporary society, but there are some, and one of them is to be perceived as intolerant. I'd have to say that what we just heard could easily be pegged by many as a statement of extreme intolerance. For you to say that God is not obligated to honor the very sincere beliefs of all the people in the world who don't happen to buy into the Christian gospel. I agree that that sounds very intolerant. And uh, I can only...